Hello, my name is CallBearHD and greetings from Eastern Europe. This time it's upcoming horror games, 20 of them in one video. Let's roll. Blair Witch game is based on the movie franchise. In the original movie, students went to the Black Hills Forest to film a movie about evil being urban legend named the Blair Witch. Every single one of them died in the woods, but the tape was found and allegedly the same tape was shown in the movie theaters as a movie. I was a naive teenager back then and it wasn't hard for me to believe that the event shown there was the real deal. Ah, oh, silly me. So game follows the same story only two years later. It's a year 1996. A young boy disappears in the Black Hills Forest and you as Alice, a former police officer with a troubled past, you join the search. What starts as an ordinary investigation soon turns into an endless nightmare as you confront your fears and the Blair Witch itself, a mysterious evil force that haunts the woods with just your loyal dog Bullet by your side and some potato salad. You navigate the way through a cursed forest that warps and distorts both time and space. Graphics as you can see are really really nice, so the horrors you'll confront here could be painfully realistic. Lust from Beyond this is a psychological horror with occult and erotic themes. Actually, this game is totally for grown-ups and I doubt you will ever see it being played on Twitch, at least not the very fun parts of it. As we can see from the provided gameplay, Lust from Beyond focuses on exploration and puzzle solving. Wario's creatures, demons and sexy girls are your often companions in this journey. An intriguing plot with erotic and occult themes guides the player's character through the mansion inspired with Lovecraft's works and paintings of Zdislav Bekshinsky. By the way, he was an amazing Polish painter, you should check his works and his tragic life story. The Last of Us 2 First game was focused around zombies, but the second part seems to be wired around human cruelty. From the brief footage shown off, it looks like the human faction groups are becoming more of a threat rather than dealing with the creatures that lurk in the city outskirts. First game was more like a movie than a real game because main thing in Last of Us was not the gameplay itself, but the story. We can expect nothing less from the second part, I just hope that they left the horror part in it. You know, humans are not that scary as zombies or other creepy creatures. We encountered rapey cannibals in a lot of games, but I doubt they ever sent shivers down your spine. The Blackout Club game is centered around the mystery. Teenagers from a small town have started to black out and wake up randomly at the different locations with no knowledge as what had happened. But this is not your ordinary I had too much vodka blackout. This occurrence becomes a normal situation and the teens must deal with it until they band together and figure out just what's going on. It is a co-op horror game centered around a group of teenage friends investigating a monstrous secret beneath the skin of their small town. Here one to four players explore Explore procedurally generated missions against a fearsome enemy you can only see with your eyes closed. That's a pretty cool mechanic. Game is already in early access and has very positive reviews on Steam, so this is a title you have to keep your eye on. Someday you will return. Game is a story-driven psychological horror game about a desperate search for a missing daughter deep in the woods where you swore you'd never return. This seems to be a deep narrative journey as well, which will give players plenty of mature themes to go through. As you venture deeper into the woods, you'll uncover deep dark secrets along with the fatherhood concepts and past incidents. In the forest, you will encounter peculiar people who will help you understand the true reason why your daughter keeps running away. So let me guess the unexpected ending. She is dead and you probably killed her. And you're dead too. Everyone is dead and the forest itself is just a metaphor. And that metaphor is dead too. Yes, yeah, something like that. The Dark Pictures Anthology Man of Meta. The developers are calling it the Dark Anthology, with the first title being Man of Medan. So far we know that the game will feature a cast of characters that, much like Until Dawn, can all be killed. This time around players will be diving into the sea with a group of friends in search of sunken treasure, but it turns out that there is something else lurking in the depths below. As we can see from the trailer, some silly looking zombies are trying to attack your controlled character and you just have pressed some button many times if you want to 
escape their evil grasp. I don't know, that doesn't look good. I can tell you that doesn't look good at all. But as we know, this is a story-based game where everything is directed, so don't expect amazing gameplay, just be the one who decides who lives and who dies, usually totally unintentionally. Unholy. At last, something more original and truly interesting. From the trailer it looks something similar to an Agony game. Crazy unrealistic surroundings and demons everywhere, but it's actually nothing like that. Unholy takes place on a desolate planet, where last members of the human race live in the last city. This sprawling metropolis is divided between castes, and every day is shrouded in fear. Fear of being noticed by higher castes, fear of being killed by a mysterious plague that is slowly consuming consuming the city, fear of being caught by one of the maniacs or mysterious beasts that are going through the streets at night. You play as Saida, a mother whose child is abducted, resulting her in risking her life when seeking clues. Gameplay is a mix of horror and stealth game, where each challenge can be solved in several different ways. You can use stealth kill or impersonate the enemies in order to move further. That sounds really cool. Chernobylite. It might have a word light in the name, but there is nothing light in the Chernobyl. Heavy particles are everywhere! Remember Stalker? Chernobylite surely looks like that game, but way more scary and dark. Game is described as a science fiction survival horror game, mixing the free exploration of its disturbing world with challenging combat, unique crafting and non-linear storytelling. Here you will try to survive and reveal the twisted secrets of Chernobyl. In the 3D scanned recreation of the exclusion zone. That sounds really nice. The Peterson case. Those of you who enjoyed classics like The X-Files may instantly be intrigued by this game. The Peterson case follows a detective on a case that has been passed on from one detective to another, set in Roswell, USA. After the whole UFO incident, players set off to discover what happened to the Peterson family. This is a family that just vanished with no traces of what happened. That usually happens when aliens abduct you nothing unexpected there. The Peterson case is a first-person psychological horror game, one of those that makes you think twice before going to the bathroom at night. So you could drink vodka from a secret stash you hid from your wife, because you never liked sharing that much. In-game you will uncover horrific flashbacks of war and beings not from this earth. Realize the terrible truth that has consumed the Peterson family while you walk through their ever-changing home of memories, battling your own identity and purpose. Let me guess the unexpected ending again. You're probably dead, and all aliens are dead, and the Peterson family is just a metaphor of your own evil doings, no? Well, it could be, we'll see. Bitter Tides this one really looks incredible. I can't believe I have never heard about it before. In Bitter Tides, we find ourselves in a gloomy wilderness from a nightmare full of dangers in the form of traps and monsters. During the game, we have to find out where we are and what is going on around us. However, the matter is hindered by numerous traps and dangerous dark creatures. In order to survive, we have to avoid them getting on the road, so they should be distracted and smuggled behind their backs snares should be set on them and eliminated by any other means, for example by throwing Molotov cocktail at them. Somehow game remind me of Amnesia, maybe they took an inspiration from it. The Beast Inside game comes from a successful Kickstarter campaign. The story follows CIA cryptanalyst who leaves Boston and moves to the country with his wife Emma. His handlers are afraid they won't be able to keep him safe there, but Adam believes he needs a peaceful place in a woodland. Clearly, he have never watched the horror movies, but he wants to take a shot at the military code and alter the course of the Cold War. As it turns out, unexpectedly, the area is quite the opposite of a peaceful place. Gameplay is in the first person perspective and while released footage has shown the protagonist fighting off a hostile enemy with a weapon, it seems the focus in terms of gameplay is puzzle solving and exploration. Absolom, End of Gods Actually, game's name looks like some Slavic surname. Absolov. Dmitry Absolov, engineer of Chernobyl power plant. But that's only slight resemblance. 
game is actually in the genre of cyberpunk Norse mythology. Yeah, that sounds quite original and also looks like that. In this future Viking horror, you awaken a sanctuary of steel and concrete built to honor the Norse gods and to house an artifact buried in the earth eons ago. So you have to survive here, find an artifact and so on. Also game has difficulty settings, so you can play it only for the story, if you are weakling. Stay in the light. This is survival horror with ray tracing technology. As we play we take on the role of a hero trapped in a dark labyrinth who is constantly being harassed by a humanoid monster known as He. The protagonist has only a torch, a bit of chalk and a mirror on his back. Actually all that doesn't look that scary because humanoid monster that looks somewhat like less hairy Hagrid from Harry Potter isn't the scariest thing you can encounter in the game. Stay in the light is in the early access but as comments in Steam state that access is very, very, very early. Daymare 1998 Developers say that Daymare 1998 is a third-person survival horror with hardcore survival mechanics and hard-to-kill enemies. It requires a strategic approach to combat and puzzles and offers a multi-character point of view of the story, revealing a deep and obscure lore. Yeah, mutated zombies again. Very deep. Very original. Not. But it might be a bit scary. We'll see about that in the future. Game is obviously inspired by the Resident Evil franchise or even zombie movies of the 90s. The game is really hard, where every bullet matters, so it's not for a casual player. Also, the game looks very dark, and that's just plain bad. Apparition First thing that came to my head after the first glimpse at the gameplay was You can't go anywhere with the burning candle like that. Candles are not lamps. Slightest wind breeze will extinguish it. This game imitates the immersion of the feeling of something watching you out from the woods and leaving you cautious and freaked out. Game is set in the fictional and mysterious haunted forest of Green Creek full of monsters and ghosts waiting to be discovered. Here like in the game raw footage you will use your camera and audio recorder to prove the existence of the supernatural, putting yourself in grave danger. Apparition is an early access and the reviews on Steam are positive. Paranoid. Ah. This one feels like a truly scary game. Paranoid is the first person horror that tells the story of Patrick Coleman, who for many years has lived in an apartment he inherited from his deceased parents. The family tragedy from many years ago caused Patrick to struggle with addictions and mental problems. The only member of the Patrick family who remained alive was his sister, who disappeared 13 years ago. One day Patrick answers the phone and it turns out it's his sister. She announces her arrival arrival several years after disappearing. Well, the story is here, the horror is here, only thing that's not here is the release date. Well, let's hope it will happen next year. Made of Scare Set in 1898 and based on the haunting story of Elizabeth Williams about young woman imprisoned by her father to stop her from marrying the man she loves. So you have to save her. Gameplay focused on a story exploration and no weapon survival tactics. Ah, those are the most scary ones. A 3D sound based AI system is the core survival gameplay mechanic. Hide, run, creep, trap and distract are some of the techniques you need to master to survive enemies with super Super hearing. As you progress, enemies become more difficult to avoid, to the point where standing still and holding your breath is the only option. Guilt. This is exactly what it looks like. A horror game for kids. Oh boy, but please, do not buy it for your 8 year old nephew or son if you don't want him to start vetting the bed again. Play it yourself. Of course, maybe you have already noticed that this game has very unusual platform, at least for now. Google Stadia is the place where you can play the game. The action described in Guild revolves around a girl named Sally, whose cousin Emily disappeared in mysterious circumstances. The heroine decides to go looking for her. However, this is not an easy task. The whole city has been taken over by dark creatures who do not have friendly intentions. Folia, dear father. 
If you are afraid of ghosts, this one will be the real challenge for your brain. Even the trailer itself is scary. Of course, here you can't hear the sounds from the original video and you're pretty safe from unexpected jump scares, but this was the only trailer where I actually flinched. That's impressive. Also, I have to cut the most disturbing parts of the trailer out because I want you to watch my video till the end and then press that subscribe button. This is a first-person horror game that takes us to a university campus that has been captured by deadly dangerous monsters. The production is characterized by a high level of brutality and has support for virtual reality goggles, HTS Vive and PlayStation VR. So a good way to get that hot attack you always wanted. Twin Soul the game is set in Russia not long ago after the breakdown of the Soviet Union. Players assume the roles of souls of dead people who went neither to heaven nor to hell. So basically they stayed in the Soviet Union. Trapped in the purgatory, they are trying to find their way to the proper afterlife. Game trailer starts showing a poor man's apartment near the railway. But everything is not what it seems to be. Look at this handsome fella. Isn't he nice? He might not be a lot of things, but he's long. I give him that. And that's it, if you liked it, please press the like button and subscribe for more videos like that. Also, you can support me for real by becoming a patron on Patreon. Videos like this one take days to make and your support is really important. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, scary day, bye.